putting the gay back in Marvin Gay. Citizen Kane is considered to be the best film ever made by cinephiles, movie snobs, and pretentious dicks. I mean, I personally consider the Boondock Saints to be the best film ever, but I'm a different kind of dick. So what can you do? It is... It's beautiful, beautiful cinema. But it got me thinking, what would be the Citizen Kane of comic book movies? I asked this question a few months back in a community post, but as I was reading the comments, I noticed that many people seem to interpret this question a few different ways. The first was, what is the best comic book movie ever? Another way is comic book movies that flopped upon their initial release, but got more recognition later on. And the final was a comic book movie that had a large impact on the genre as a whole. I'll touch on these different type of answers later on, but first I need to find out why Citizen Kane gets so much praise, and then try to see if we can find a movie in the comic book genre that fits the same or similar criteria. So let's go ahead and discuss that. And I know you'll suck a cock for a five pound bag. Oh nigga, you gay! <laughs> So after rewatching it and multiple videos on it, I think I narrowed it down to a few reasons to why it's considered so good. And it's largely due to the filmmaking and the impact it had on cinema as a whole. You see, Orson Welles and cinematographer Greg Tolan took techniques that were used in previous pictures from that time and expanded upon and perfected them, as well as they're just in a few tricks of their own. In fact, they did it so well that Citizen Kane basically became the blueprint for many filmmakers decades later. If you watch this film right now, you're gonna notice a lot of things in it that you've seen in movies that are still made today. Like montages, extreme low angles, extreme close-up shots, creative transitions from one scene to the next. Deep focus, which is keeping the foreground, middle ground, and background all looking sharp as possible in the frame. And of course there's its style of lighting, which will be a big influence on the noir genre later on. And there's the long tracking shots, and the way the camera moves around and through objects in unrealistic ways, basically giving us, the viewer, an omniscient perspective of what the characters don't see. It also uses this technique to reveal information to us without saying a word. And it's also the way the story is told. It's told out of order and jumps around between different points of Kane's life, and follows the reporter uncovering the information. I mean the first scene is his death, and then from there we learn more about him through various flashbacks at certain points of his life. Now does all this stuff sound or look familiar? Well it should because it's been used in many movies ever since its release, all the way up until this day. Now Sister Kane wasn't the first to use these type of effects or techniques, but it's how often they're used and how well they're used that makes it stand out. And it leads me to my next point, the impact that it had. Sure the movie was a flop upon its release, but not long after it gained the following and it cited as a source for inspiration for many filmmakers. Okay look, I'm not gonna pretend like I knew all this shit right off the bat, so I'll leave a link to a video by 100 Years of Cinema that breaks all this down very well and explains it better than I ever could. It's probably the best video I've ever seen about Citizen Kane and why it's considered a masterpiece, so I definitely recommend you check it out. But anyway, I actually understand why people nowadays aren't very impressed with Citizen Kane, because it has a lot of stuff in it that we've already seen before. But Citizen Kane was one of the blueprints for a lot of this stuff, and has influenced some of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Hitchcock utilized several techniques from it, and it's one of Scorsese's and Spielberg's favorite movies. Citizen Kane on television for the first time. And I began to become aware of editing and camera positions. Um, and this is what I think Wells brought to uh, cinema, uh, to American cinema particularly, because up to that time, it was the seamless film, in a way. Um, the hidden camera, the, the, uh, the camera that you couldn't tell was there. So Wells was the, the one to really break open, open up the Pandora's box of uh, cameras flying up in the eye. The courage of the filmmaker, the courage, the audacity. It's about courage and audacity, and I'm making this my way, and I'm going to deepen the focus. I don't care how many layers of makeup those actors sweat off. We're going to see from one inch to infinity in every shot. We're going to see ceilings and we're going to, we're, we're going to tell a very convoluted mystery story about a man's life. So I understand not being blown away when you see it for the first time, but considering it came out in 1941, and basically all the techniques are still used to this day, is a testimony to its quality. It basically took all these small effects and techniques from previous films, as well as introducing tricks of their own, and combined and expanded upon them. And that's why Citizen Kane is considered a masterpiece, the impressive level of filmmaking, and the impact that it had on cinema as a whole. Did he just call me a black cunt? Yes he did. He can't do that, that's racist. But you are black and you are the cunt Ernie, those are the facts. So now we know why Citizen Kane is so good, and considered the best movie ever, we have to find a comic book movie equivalent to it, something that has praised and left a huge impact on the genre. Not just going through all your guys' comments and putting some thought into it, I think I figured it out. But before I tell you what the movie is, first let me tell you a story about the filmmaker. You see, he's a guy who was born in London. The Dark Knight. Let me finish. He was born in London and had dreams of coming to America to make some films. The Dark Knight. God damn it, let me finish. They ruined the story, they ruined the story. Okay, yeah, it's The Dark Knight. As I was reading the replies, this one kept popping up over and over again, and I see why. When it comes to comic book movies, especially in 2008, this was a game changer. It transcends its genre and affects how others see comic book movies, and it's still the gold standard over 13 years later. It used a style of filmmaking not common in the comic book genre. It was a serious crime drama with comic book characters, and that's one of the main things that makes it stand out. It didn't feel like any other comic book movie that came before it, and so it wasn't seen as goofy or cheesy. It was very serious and played the story straight, not to mention the way it explored the themes of its characters. The biggest 
this being the duality between the Joker and Batman. You have Batman as the incorruptible symbol of justice and order, and then you have the Joker, who is anarchy and chaos, pushing Batman's morals and code to the limit. Two sides of the same coin, if you will. Now, similar to how Citizen Kane had impact on cinema as a whole, I think the Dark Knight did the same thing to the superhero and comic book genre, essentially elevating the genre to be taken more seriously, to tell a more mature story with multiple themes being expressed, and of course, some very powerful performances. Now, was this the first comic book movie to tell a mature story with a deep message? No, of course not. Before this, V for Vendetta came out and explored the dangers of a tyrannical government and how they control and lie to their people, and how by standing together, people can topple their government. And hell, similar to Batman, they even explored how the mask is a symbol, not just a person, but an idea. But what that movie was missing was the mass appeal and attention that the Dark Knight received. And that's what sets it apart. It's the impact that it had on the masses and how it made people take a look at the genre in a different light, being connected to and rooted to something that many would just dismiss as dumb kids movies. And of course, it also wasn't the only comic book movie that was intended for mature adult audiences. 300 came out the year before, and that's a rated R comic book movie. And of course, there's Sin City. So of course, it wasn't one of the only mature comic book movies out there. Now, the other way I've seen people interpret the question, you know, what's the Citizen Kane of comic book movies, they gave me answers like Spider-Man 2 or Watchmen, and like we already mentioned, V for Vendetta. And I definitely see where they're coming from, because they either interpret the question as, what's the best comic book movie of all time, or a comic book movie that flopped upon its initial release, but got recognition later on. And that's why you see Spider-Man 2, because many consider it one of the best comic book movies ever. And it's also why you see Watchmen, because when it first released, it was considered a box office flop. But as the years went on, the movie became even more relevant, showing how ahead of its time that it was. And so it gained more recognition and praise years after its release. But when you consider what made Citizen Kane so good, that being the editing techniques, the way the story is told, cinematography, but more importantly the impact that it had on filmmaking in general, then the comic book movie equivalent would be The Dark Knight, mainly due to the impact that it had on the genre, and how its style of filmmaking was drastically different from the others within that genre at the time, and basically became the gold standard. And it was so good at what it did, that it essentially elevated the genre, and showed many people what kind of stories can be told within the comic book movie genre, and how it can break the tropes that they're known for. And that's the reason this movie is still talked about to this day. And that's why I would consider it the Citizen Kane of comic book movies. So now that you heard what I had to say, I want you to leave a comment and let me know, do you agree or disagree? What would you consider the Citizen Kane of comic book movies? And of course, don't be afraid to explain why. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, go and drop a like on it. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. Stay in bed today I need to think Nina! Mm-hmm Nani! Nigga, hush! How the hell you gonna get fired on your day off? It's broke my leg, it's broken well, I'll tell you one thing Around here, you gonna work and go to school Jesus didn't go to school, why do I have to? Hitler went to school, look how you he You just blah, up. blah, gay sex, blah, blah, Congress You know, you gotta be interesting The first of the month, rent is due If you ain't got nothing on the table